Now that we've derived the basic existence equations, what I'd like to do is run through a small example and then graph that so that we can then go ahead and delineate it into a three-dimensional time coordinate system. So if you recall, when we were deriving the existence equations, they came about through a com through conversation that I had with my great-grandmother regarding the issue of the experience of time increasing as we get older. And in that example that I used to derive the existence equations, we use the ratios between assuming the great-grandmother being 100 years old and myself being 20 at the time of this conversation. So what we'll go ahead and do is continue using those values. So we'll go ahead and put my grandmother here. Okay. And this can be me. Okay. And, we'll, and since I'm the younger individual, go ahead and denote me as B. And since my great grandmother was the elder, she'll be A. And again, remember that using, even though we're using the subjective experience of the passage of time that we as individuals sort of sense, I guess you could loosely say, though this applies to that, that is more an analogy for these equations as we will later see they apply to special and general relativity. I just wanted to remind us of that. So anyway, so here we have A and B, and we'll go ahead and start drawing some reference frames. Use a different color, make them a little more noticeable, but distinct from the individuals. So we'll go ahead and have my reference of my great-grandmother, and then here's my great-grandmother's reference of me. Here's my great-grandmother's subjective frame of reference. Here's my subjective frame of reference. And again, remember there was an, an issue of the relative frames of reference repeating back and forth through an iteration where infinite relative frames of reference relative to A, relative to B, relative to A, ad infinitum, that relative to A and that relative to B leads to an infinite progression relative to A and an infinite regression relative to B, of which the existence equations are used to account for. What we're dealing with here is a way to account for an extra aspect to relative frames of reference. So as we get past this example using the psychological, or I'm sorry, the subjective experience of time relative to two individuals that are experiencing two different rates of the passage of time. We'll then take that, delineate it into three -dimensional, a three-dimensional time coordinate system, and apply it to physics. So that's where we're going. So keep that in mind as we are using what I call the age analogy for deriving the existence equations. So... We've already gone through the relative frames of reference schemata, and we've already derived the equations. So let's just go ahead and, and presume that you've seen that, and let's go ahead and move forward into our example. So relative to A, or before we go there, we're going to establish that, that A is 100 years of age, and I'm, and I'm going to leave off the units because we're going to bring that up in a little bit. We'll go ahead and let B equal 20 units. So we could think of this, uh, that the units that they have is, you know, units of time, like UT, some, some base units. Because, again, these equations can be calibrated to whatever units we're using them in. And then, if you recall, for, for solving, if you recall, the issue was is that because we're assuming that they are experiencing two different rates of passage of time, that there's actually two 
experiences happening, one relative to B, which would be in B's objective frame of reference and B's subjective frame of reference, and then one relative to A, which would be in A's objective frame of reference and A's subjective frame of reference, and that the objective frame of reference of A and the objective frame of reference B, and the same thing for their subjective frames of reference, are not equivalent. Hence the need to go beyond just the basic ratio that you get between A and B by just solving for 20 over 100 or 100 over 20, which you would normally do, which I'm arguing is something that goes along with the assumption of an absolute space type model, something that assumes finite relative frames of reference versus what we're doing that, if, that assumes infinite relative frames of reference. Okay, so the equation for A would be 100 over 20 equals N, and then to account for the infinite relative frames of reference, as we've previously found, it would be 100 over 20 minus 1 equaling N star. And as a reminder, the way we derived this equation was from a continued fraction where when we solved for n star, we came to this, which as long as the b component or, or part in the denominator is not uh, equal to 1 or less than 1 actually also, then we're not going to run into any problems. So, so as a reminder, I'll go ahead and put that, that b is greater than 1. Okay, and so when we solve for this, what we end up with is that n star equals, got it written down, there we go, 5.2623. Oops, that's wrong. 5.2623. Okay, and then over here, solving for b, it was 20 over 100 equaling u, and again we need to account for the infinite regress that occurs with b. This is accounting for the infinite progression of a, and now we're going to account for the infinite regression of b. And when we did the continued fraction, what we found is that u star equals 20 over 100 plus 1 u star. And then I have this value written down also, and that works out to be 0 0.1980. So, if you look, you'll notice that even though we're dealing with infinite relative frames of reference, the value for n star is a finite number, and likewise for the value of u star. Notice that u star is slightly less than 0 0.2, which is the ratio of 20 to 100. And then n star is slightly more than 5, which is the, the ratio of 100 to 20. So, so now we solve for what's called the identity constant. Remember, for the identity constant, the identity t constant is greater than or equal to 1. When the identity constant equals 1, that's a basic indicator that a and b are identical, such as 100 over 100 or 20 over 20. So the way we solve for the identity constant was we multiply u star times n star. So u star times n star equals i. This is analogous, if you will, to u times n equaling 1. This would be the case if they are identical. Since they're not identical, there's infinite relative frames of reference. So we're accounting for that with this. And what we end up with is that i equals 1.042. Okay, so these are, or 
basic oops, values, uh, having cali uh, used the existing calibration. And now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and solve for where A and B are relative to one another, assuming that they are interacting through an infinite series of relative frames of reference. Let's go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Go ahead and write these values down. So U star, we know that equals 0 0.1980. N star equals 5.2632. And the identity constant equals 1.0421. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and solve for A star and B star, A star being where A is in the future relative to B when B is in the present time relative to itself at a particular moment in this event or conversation. And then B star would be where B is in the past relative to A when A is at that same particular moment relative to themselves in the event or the conversation. And again, as a reminder, those equations were A star equals A minus N star. Or I'm sorry, A star equals A plus N star minus the identity constant, and B star equals B minus the identity constant minus U star. And, though, and it's very easy to see how these equations were derived. Again, if A and B were identical, N would be 1 because it would be the same value in the, de the numerator and denominator, so N would equal 1. And, I, and the identity constant would also be 1, so this would be 0, so there would be no modification to A, because there's no infinite relative frames of reference, and same thing for B. We're adding here because we're, we're accounting for a slight shift into the future for A that's not accounted for in the mathematics that you find in special or general relativity, and also there's an extra regress or retrograde that we find with B, and that's what this subtraction is for that you also don't find in special general relativity. Okay, so let's go ahead and find these values. Um, and when we plug the values in, so uh, when A is slightly into the future, A star is one point, I'm sorry, is, is 104.2211. And B star is 19.1559. So I'll go ahead and do another graphic representation of this so we can make this a little bit more clear. There's some room, I think I have adequate room here. All right, let's go ahead and make two, I guess, frames of reference that we can consider. This can be event relative to B. And this here. Let's go ahead and give this some depth so we can see that it's a reference frame. So here's, here I am when I was 20, talking to my grandmother relative to me, great-grandmother that is, when she was a hundred, or when I'm a hundred. Okay, here's this frame of reference. So here's a frame of reference of 
this was my great grandmother. She was 100 when I was 20. So basically, because I am, am experiencing time at a slower rate than my great grandmother, it works out that there should be two events rather than one, and my gr and let's and and based on these ratios, let's go ahead and, and plug our number numbers in. Let's say there's some particular moment in the event, and we'll just say, call that mo that moment. Uh, we'll call it moment X, and we'll put it in the middle. It's sort of like halfway through a conversation. Okay. So when, and, and maybe it's like noon, let's say. So when the conversation between me and my grandmother hits noon, relative to my grandmother, she is 100 at that period. Let's say it's at that period, she just happens to work. We but let's say we both have the same birthday. We were both born at noon, so at noon at this particular event, she just happens to turn a hundred at noon. Right then, okay, bam! Happy birthday, great grandmother. So here she is a hundred, and relative to her, I'm twenty. However, because I'm slightly in the past due to the two events and the relative frames of reference. I'm actually at 19.1559. Okay, so then me relative to myself at 19.159, I'm sorry, 1559, as I progress to now event relative to me, B, and now I'm at noon, so now it's my. 20th birthday, so congratulations to me, I'm now 20, even though my great-grandmother is 100 relative to me, she now, relative to herself, has moved on to being 104.2211. So, here's the slight retrograde, and here's the slight uh, progression. And so now what we can do is let's go ahead and, and graph this.